Hey, superstars, I got a video response that I wanted to get done from my pal G's Mikey, who's celebrating 1,000 well-deserved subs and five years on the YouTubes. Uh, Mikey wants to see a tabletop showcase, so here goes. All right, here's my tabletop, and I struggled a little bit coming up with a theme for this. So what I did was I dug out some of the stuff that I collected and cherished as a kid. So here is my original baseball card binder. Not very exciting, I know, but this was kind of the cornerstone of my collection. I would have alphabetical pages for all of my favorite superstars like Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonilla, uh, Corey Snyder, and uh, Steve Sachs. I've since taken them out, and over the pandemic, I actually put together a pack pulled 88 top set since that was the first year that I collected. I'm not really a set builder, and I probably already had two of these completed sets, but it was a lot of fun. I'm still missing one card, and I don't remember what it is, but someday I'll pull that out of a pack, and I'll finish that up. I kept a lot of stuff in shoeboxes, and they generally had to be Nike Air shoeboxes because I was a jerk kid like that. And this one, I had my little sports talk thing, and here's my 91 Donruss card. I don't remember having this done at all, actually, but look at that superstar right there. I hit 346 with 26 dingers, not too shabby. Gem Mint 10 right there. And look at this handsome guy. Yes, sir. Trading cards. That's your boy. All right. Okay, I started collecting in 88, like I said, and my mom would take me to card shows, and even back then I was really into vintage. Uh, these were some of my most prized possessions, especially Stan Musial and Carly Yastrzemski there. And then Thurman Munson was from Canton, Ohio, which is pretty close to my hometown, so this one was always pretty special to me. And how many people's moms bought their kids a Billy Ripken F-Face card? My, mom, my mom's the best. There's a Griffey rookie and a 77 and some 78s. Brooks, Steve Garvey, Frank Robinson, and Mr. Schmidt. My collection was a lot more diverse back then. And here's my 1940s Nakona glove. I did have a little collection of antique gloves, and this one was always my favorite and nicest one. I'm not sure where the others are, but uh, Nakona is a city in Texas, and they still make really nice gloves. I believe they are the only company that still makes gloves in the U.S., and uh, here's my little Indians pin. I think it's from 1948, but it could be from 54. I don't know, but I've always really liked that pin. This ball was my mom's when she was a kid. She had it signed by Ray Fossey, and then she passed it on to me. And I bought a 71 Ray Fossey to put a face to the name, as it were. And I've always had a soft spot for Fossey because of that. I picked up this ball at a show at some point. It is signed by Scott Bales, uh, Phil Necro. There's Julio Franco, Spike Owen, Ed Vandenberg, and Joe Carter. I always thought that was just a priceless piece, but uh, yeah, I still love that one. And this was the scorecard from my very first Indians game that I went to in 1988. It was uh, Blue Jays versus Indians. Unfortunately, Greg Swindell lost to Jimmy Key 4-2, and I lost my voice screaming like a little idiot from the upper deck. It's pretty cool that I still have that. Here's a Post magazine. I don't really remember it being this trashed, but I really like Saturday Evening Post baseball covers, and this one especially because girls were dumb and baseball was cool, at least until 1993. This book has pictures of every Indians card from 52 to 88, I think, and now I'm close to having all of these. Something that I'd never dream would be possible, so that's pretty neat. And I always like these little Becketts, just a lot more portable if you're going to a card show or a shop or whatever. And then I had a subscription to Beckett. I believe this was my very first one, but I'm not positive. Um, I read these from cover to cover. There's the bow cover, and I was really into the Cubs and Sandberg. And here's a Tough Stuff, sort of a competitor to Beckett. My aunt worked for the publisher that made these, and I think she gave me this one. This, this is a little cartoon I made way back when. It's not very funny, but I was probably 12, so I'm going to show it to you anyway. Batter up. Hey, Biscuit Brain, your mama wears army boots. I was pretty clever back then. Strike one. You're about as intelligent as a smart rock. So was I. Uh, strike two. I hear your coach had to buy termite insurance for your head. I actually kind of like that one. Uh, strike three. You're out. I should have used an E there instead of a U, but I was a dumb kid, so whatever. And he wants the guy's autograph. He played for the home X's against the away O's, I guess, so there you go. And then I got these little team collection books from 88 Donruss. I remember ordering these out of some mail order catalog or something. I thought they were pretty rad, and they were supposed to be worth a lot of money like all this stuff was. I had the Cubs and the Red Sox and the Mets and the A's and the Yankees, and that's what's going to put me through college. 
All right. I remember one of my first card shows, Julio Franco and Joe Carter were there signing and I was so nervous. They were like these huge, amazing, larger than life people. They were the first athletes that I ever met in person. And I treasured these two cards that I had them sign. And here's my first TTM. I've told a lot of these stories before, and this is no exception. I read an article in Beckett, I think it was, about getting autographs through the mail. It listed all the stadium addresses, and they talked about a kid that sent a letter wishing Kirby Puckett or something a happy birthday, and he got his autograph back. So I sent to Mark Grace and Ryan Sandberg, and I'm still waiting on the Sandberg, but I got this back from Grace, and I was over the moon. I collected a lot of sets. There's a 90 Fleer. You know I love 90 Fleer. And I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. I really like the upper deck sets, and I had a lot of top sets too, from like 86 to 91, I think. I did crack open the 89, and the Griffey's not great. It's off center, unfortunately. I had two more upper deck Griffey rookies. One was stolen by a neighbor kid, and the other I traded for these three Ben McDonald rookies. So I think I got a pretty good deal. Three cards for one, right? And then I mentioned I was really into Sandberg. I love playing second base, even though I was pretty terrible, but he was the best. So I had a pretty good Sandberg collection. There were the 84s, the rookies. I think I had three of the tops. This was my absolute favorite card. And I would keep all my favorite cards in this really neat Nike shoe box. It's like corrugated plastic. A neighbor kid gave this to me, so I don't know what shoes came in it. And it sat at the head of my waterbed. So if you were going to steal my cards, you would probably wake me up. Flawless reasoning, right? There's a Sports Impressions Ryan Sandberg statue. Pretty slick. Looks just like him. And they only made 2,950 of those. Uh, I wonder how many are still around because I imagine that bat could break pretty easily. I'm surprised this one's still intact, actually. Here's a really rad Collector Series Tricards. So trippy. And they only made 50,000 of those, so that's pretty rare. You'll never see another one of those. And every kid just had to have a starting lineup figure of his favorite player, right? And I just realized I finished on a starting lineup, which is probably pretty boring, but this was all pretty priceless stuff to me. So uh, yeah, there's my Arby sign. I finally got the hot dog sign hung up and there's the mighty steak elves. Those have nothing to do with any of this, but they're still pretty cool. So now I got to put all this crap away, but it was definitely fun going through all of it. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen a lot of that stuff. Uh, so there you go, Mikey. Congratulations, my friend.